In this video, I'll be speaking to you about reflection and refraction. And the good news is reflection itself is super easy. Uh, it's so basic, in fact, and there's really not much to say except for uh, when something uh, comes into a surface like this, if it reflects, it means it bounces off. And the good news is the angle that it comes in at is the angle that it leaves at. So the, the one important thing though to remember though with uh, reflection is that uh, we define our angles, you know, sort of coming in and the angle coming out. We define the angles from the normal. So what I mean by that, the normal is if this is the surface right here, the normal is going to be at 90 degrees to it. And so we define our angles, so, you know, theta 1 and theta 2 like this right here, uh, as from the normal. So in this case, in reflection, it's super easy. Theta 1 just equals theta 2. Oops. So it's just, uh, that's the rule for reflection. Pretty straightforward, not much else to say. So we'll move on to refraction. That's more important, I think. Uh, this is actually just a bending of the light. So actually the light, uh, it actually speeds up or slows down. And it doesn't have to be just light, but um, actually maybe I'll be careful here. I'll say, uh, so it speeds up or it slows down. So this is the key thing that goes on here. So um, it could be for light, but it could also be for water. It could be for anything. Um, so in this case here, it's going to speed up or slow down depending on a difference in um, optical density, we can say. So this is this N, this index of refraction. This term right here, N. So for example, for air, N would be 1. And then for water, N would be, I don't know, greater than that. I can't remember. I think it's something like 1.3 for some water or something like that. Let's just say it's that. So what happens is this, um, as light comes in, its frequency remains the same. This is one of the key things actually from uh, all of this. You have to know that the, the um, frequency of the light that comes in is the same as the light that leaves. So the frequency doesn't change. The speed can and the wavelength can. And that's actually going to be really key here. So we have an equation for it. And the good news is you don't have to memorize this one right here. It's uh, nicknamed Snell's Law. Uh, but it goes like this, n1 over n2, and this is how it looks in your data booklet, equals uh, sine theta 2 over sine theta 1. Notice here the n1 over 2, but everything else goes 2 over 1. Uh, I just want to make sure I have it exactly how it looks here, and it's a v2 over v1. This is the equation that you get in your data booklet. So basically it defines this index of refraction uh, in medium 1 and 2. 1 would be what it is initially in and two is what it enters. Um, the angles right here will be important. So uh, we'll see what happens with the angles, but also the speed. So for example, what's going to happen here in this example right here that I've shown you, uh, you're going to see, um, how should I say it here? You're gonna see this ray right here coming in at this theta one, because it's going from something from a smaller number to a bigger number, okay, smaller to a bigger, that means in this case right here, it's going to have to be something with sine theta. Uh, this right here is going to be bigger and smaller. So what's going to end up happening is your angle right here, your angle of refraction, we call it, is going to be, um, in this case, if it goes from uh, smaller n value to larger n value, then the angle itself is actually going to get smaller. So in this case right here, I could redraw it. Uh, let me just attempt to here. Draw an arrow. So maybe it'll be something like... Maybe like that. So something where the angle, can you see this angle uh, theta 2 here that I'm trying to draw here? See theta 2 is smaller than theta 1. So what's going to end up happening is um, it's going to slow down as it goes into this material. Um, now, what I love about this picture here is this girl here smiling. I mean, that's refraction obviously happening in the water there. And I love this one. This picture actually made me LOL. I actually laughed out loud when I saw this. It's a dog in a swimming pool, but just with the way the refraction looks, it looks like he's got huge legs. I love how he called it uh, Dogosaurus Rex. <laughs> so the, the key thing to know is that, of course, you can use this equation, but pretty much when you're asked this on an exam, they kind of never really ask you just this. They almost always ask you for the wavelength. So an extra piece to know, maybe to try to add to your memory, is this. That the wavelength in medium 2 over medium 1 as well. So do you notice how it works? The n1 over n2. So if the n's are 1 over 2, everything else is 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1. So if you this is the part you see, then you can use that to remember. Oh yeah, I can use uh, lambda 2 over lambda 1. So frequency remains the same. That's how you can have a V equals F lambda, basically, sort of going on right here.
We have something called a critical angle. That's when the refracted angle is 90 degrees. So we could see that right here. So you could have you know, your angle right here like this. It could be coming in. And your refracted angle then would be 90 degrees. Anything then that comes in um, you know, at a, let's say, a larger angle on this. So anything that's larger than this, theta C, for example, if it comes in larger, then actually the ray is going to bounce back in on itself. It's going to reflect. So we call that total internal reflection. So that's going to be an example of that. So this here is total internal reflection is something there like that. Uh, so I think that's most of what you need for uh, refraction. Let me give you an example. This is an example, a really sneaky one that showed up on a recent exam. Uh, it sounded actually kind of sneaky, but hopefully it's not so bad. It was phrased slightly differently. I've tried to make it a little bit simpler looking, but uh, it was, uh, yeah, we have air, which is n equals one. We have water, which is n equals 1.33. This time though, your ray comes from the water and goes out to the air. So remember I said that if something goes from a medium where it has to slow down, like a, from a one to a larger number, like n equals 1.33, it's gonna slow down. In this case right here, it's the reverse. Do you see that? It's reversed. So now it comes up from the water and goes out into the air. So the outgoing rate, well, it's gonna be the opposite. So what's gonna end up happening is we're going to have, uh, so I can draw that here with an arrow. Whatever this angle right here was, the outgoing ray, instead of going smaller angle right here, it's so like towards the normal. Remember, the angle is always defined from the normal. In this case, it's going to be bigger than it. So it's going to be something, you know, where theta 2 is going to be bigger than theta 1. So now the angle here, oops, I should probably name it theta 1, with a little subscript on it. Uh, so that's really important. It's going to end up at a larger angle right here. And now what, uh, how will the wavelength change? Whatever the wavelength of a light was here, if you remember this equation right here, it says that whatever happens with N1 over N2, so if it goes from like, uh, you know, smaller to larger values like it did here, smaller to larger when it went down this way, then the wavelength went the opposite. So this became larger to smaller. So in this case right here, let's look at it. This one right here then, it's going to be, let's see, we have N, uh, let's say 1 over n2. Let's compare those numbers. So n1, we could consider that uh, 1.33 over uh, 1 in this case here. So we have this right here. That's going to equal whatever the wavelength right here is supposed to do. Um, so in this case right here, the wavelength, remember what's going to happen here. Remember I said uh, over here the uh, velocity is going to get smaller as it goes into right here. Uh, because of that, the wavelength will get smaller as I went this way. In this case right here, it goes opposite. So um, I could even say, uh, what's that? I could say it's going to get larger. In this case, here we can say that V2, uh, whoops, not V2. Come back here. I'll say lambda 2 is actually going to be larger. I think that's maybe a simpler way. Instead of trying to see it from the equation, maybe we can just do it from a conceptual point of view. Maybe that's a little bit simpler. So our wavelength is going to get larger because the angle got larger. Okay? Um, and that's because the ends went smaller. Remember, the ends do opposites to what everything else does. Whatever the ends do, the angles and the speeds uh, and the wavelengths do opposite to that. So maybe that's a simple way. So the wavelength will get larger. 